What if I were to tell you that the world is not in fact a sphere, but actually a flat disk? You'd probably point to photographs like these, of Earth, from space. And then I'd say, hey, if you want to trust the space agencies to tell you the truth, go ahead. But if you ask me, they're part of a conspiracy to lie to you. And then you'd say, what about the fact that if you fly in one direction long enough, you end up in the same place? Ha! That's just what the Illuminati want you to think. That's why they control the flight patterns, to make you think you're going in a straight line when you're actually flying in a circle. This is Argument Clinic, a series about spotting bad arguments on the internet, where today we're talking about conspiracy theories. There's one out there for everybody. The JFK assassination, the fake moon land, the Freemasons, chemtrails, CIA mind control, rigged election, Area 51. Once you get going, it's easy to see secret plots and shadowy cabals everywhere you look. In all of these cases, people can point to evidence disputing some of these claims. The photos of Neil Armstrong on the moon, the Warren Commission report, the studies that keep showing that vaccines work. <laughs> to which you will inevitably hear, you think the people who faked the moon landing couldn't gin up a couple of phony photos? Wake up, sheeple! And there's the problem. Any evidence that would seem to contradict the conspiracy is further proof of the conspiracy. It cannot be disproven. Or to use a term from science, it is not falsifiable. A hypothesis is falsifiable if you could imagine a way to prove it wrong through observation. So let's say I've only ever seen white swans, and so I assume that all swans are white. This is a falsifiable claim, because if I were ever to see a black swan, it would be disproven. Pretty simple, really. Philosopher Karl Popper came up with the idea of falsifiability in his 1934 treatise, Logik der Forschung. He was German. He was trying to figure out why Albert Einstein's theory of relativity felt more rigorous than, say, Karl Marx's theory of history, or Sigmund Freud's theories of psychoanalysis. Marx's and Freud's followers pointed out that those theories could explain pretty much anything that ever happened. Open the newspaper and you could interpret almost every story through the lens of Marx's ideas. As for Freud, you could explain just about every action someone took as a response to their parents, or repression, or sublimation. But to Popper, this wasn't a feature of these theories, but a bug. These theories had explanatory power, but no predictive power. Einstein, on the other hand, made specific predictions about, for instance, how light traveled. Predictions that, if disproven, would invalidate his entire theory. And Popper said that's what separated science from pseudoscience. As he wrote, every good scientific theory is a prohibition. It forbids certain things to happen. And the more a theory forbids, the better it is. It sounds strange, but good scientists and technologists actually spend a lot of time trying to disprove their theories, not prove them. Astro Teller, who runs X, Alphabet's fanciful moonshot division that builds self-driving cars and Wi-Fi delivering hot air balloons, says he rewards engineers who prove that ideas won't work. That's it. That's the secret. Run at all the hardest parts of the problem first. Get excited and cheer, hey, how are we going to kill our project today? Maybe you've spotted the sticky part here. The logical endpoint of falsifiability is that nobody can ever completely prove anything. You can never know if someone won't someday discover something that invalidates everything you thought was true. Like if you're Isaac Newton, who totally locked down the laws of physics until quantum mechanics showed he was mostly wrong. But that doesn't mean what the cousin you muted on Facebook thinks it means. Calling evolution just a theory doesn't mean it's wrong or a guess. A theory has a structure that allows for dispositive evidence. It could potentially be proven wrong someday if new evidence refutes it. So far, evolution has withstood every challenge, which has only made the theory more powerful. Falsifiability doesn't weaken the theory of evolution. It strengthens it. And the opposite is also true. If a theory is not falsifiable, it's not worth debating. So remember that the next time your cousin wants to argue that lizard aliens beneath the White House run international banking. That's probably just the chemtrails talking.